What does it mean to know something? You and I intuitively have a pretty firm grasp on this rather simple, vague, and admittedly a little philosophically pretentious question. We have experiences and memories, and every day we have an endless stream of thoughts and speech. For these things to have any degree of coherency between people, they must be grounded in something. And so, on feeling alone, we intuit that thing to be knowledge. Yet, to accurately quantify knowledge, to fully describe the physics that translate the raw data of the world into that mental capacity, well, we have yet to succeed. In spite of this, humanity so desperately values that end product. People's beliefs and speech have been criminalized or made the stuff of wars. When facts prove hostile to personal goals, people are quick to attack media, the means of communication, long before the content that is being communicated. But still, modernity itself is defined by media writing, the printing press, and finally global internet, all for the sake of more aggressively knowing more knowledge. In The Signifier, you play as Russell, father, widower, and neural engineer. Through innovation and sacrifice, you have created the next grand advancement in human knowledge, software that can scan the human brain and create a simulation of their experiences, called Eevee. Finally, we can know exactly what someone else knows, or at least what they have perceived. The only problem is that perception is very messy. But the pressure is on, Russell, because you have been tasked with using your machine to scan the brain of a murder victim to identify the face of an elusive killer. What comes to mind when I say the word objective? Perhaps you thought of a goal you want to achieve, but in this context, you probably thought something akin to facts or truth. Maybe you even juxtaposed it against the word subjective, meaning a person's opinion or bias. The difficulty with this juxtaposition is that it's not very practical. Whether rational or empirical, all knowledge requires someone to know it. All observations require an observer, a subject meaning all knowledge is not objective, not true, and therefore false. But that doesn't sound right either. For the sake of time, I'm just going to put the argument for how subjectivism is self-defeating for you to read on screen. In 1927, the philosopher Bertrand Russell published his work An Outline of Philosophy and came up with a novel concept that moved away from this haphazard intuition-based duality between objectivity and subjectivity. Objective perceptions are those which can be known from external observations. Subjective perceptions are those which can be known from internal observations. Introspection or self-reflection. In either case, the observations are percepts, physical interactions that cause the brain to take that information alongside all other information, memories, and associations to create an unending web of new inferences. All knowledge, whether objective or subjective, are active inferences in the mind of the observer. While Bertrand Russell's book is about much more in terms of epistemology and the philosophy of physics, this conceptual framework forms the organizational structure of the philosophical thesis, and it is this self-same conceptual framework by which the signifier's protagonist Russell designed Eevee's simulations. Due to the limitations of hardware processing power and the never-perfectly precise algorithms of machine learning, it was necessary for Russell to split the simulation between two distinct states, an objective filter and a subjective filter. Following Bertrand Russell's concept, the objective filter simulates a person's memory of 3D space as physical space, while the subjective filter simulates the person's memory of their feelings, associations, and relationships to the objects in their space. Each filter offers different advantages and disadvantages toward getting the whole picture and solving this murder. For example, in the objective filter, you may easily see a kitchen with a laptop on the counter, but deciphering the transparency of glass or the reflection of a mirror, trying to condense the spatial information of the entirety of a city skyline onto a 2D plane can result in horrible texture bugs or fractured geometry. 
The subjective filter, on the other hand, may present the body of a parent as a giant to represent their significance in the child's life, or the image of a dog overlaid onto a non-existent object, to convey an association of happiness. Through this setting, the game's level design, artwork, and environmental puzzles offer an intuitive exploration of just how interconnected a person's internal and external perceptions truly are. And do you know what the best part of this is? This deep understanding and representation of Bertrand Russell's philosophy is just the premise. The real meat of the game is how the philosophical sci-fi technology is used to expose the ethical, political, and economic implications of tech-based transhumanism, critiques of ludism being used to erroneously deny concerns over the right to privacy, the egoistic capitalism of Silicon Valley, blanket attacks on the importance of academia and philosophy in the interest of political influence, and perhaps the most intriguing question, do the dead have rights? And I'm not going to talk about any of that. The signifier was a lucky find for me. I have been working my way through an outline of philosophy slowly and carefully this entire year, when one of my favorite streamers chose this game to showcase the philosophy influence proudly displayed on its sleeve, I knew I'd be picking up my hidden game of the year. So, rather than reviewing the whole message of the game, I want you to play it for yourself, and then jump into our channel's Discord server to tell me what philosophies you found in the game. Link to the Steam store page and the Discord server in the description below. Thank you, Play Me Studio, for the signifier. And thank you for watching, my friends. If you enjoyed this video, if you found some value in it, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe buttons down below so you don't miss anything that I have planned for next year. If you enjoyed this Ludo Saturnalia, this month full of philosophical analysis of games, and would like to support this channel further, you can do so over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Socratetris, where you can get early access to video scripts, for you to critique in order to improve future videos. Friends, this has been a harrowing year to say the least, but at least with this channel we have had more growth, more new subscribers than ever. We've had many passionate comments, some amazing collabs with Etra Games and everyone who sat down with me on Gamers Tell All, and I will be making a new video soon talking about what I have planned for next year. So friends, be kind to yourselves, be healthy and safe, and I'll see you in 2021.